See brown in your face. Have you heard of everything at once? Do you know about everything at once? It's internationally known. Aliens listen to it. It's the best. <laughs> if there's everything. something you're looking for in the 814, or feeling a little bored and think there ain't no more, no check more. out everything at once and allow it to be your source. It's that raw podcast that's always showing support, highlighting the scene. No need to take I-90 to peep or 79 to see how it be. Interviewing your locals with mindsets that are global. Innovators and creators on every single upload. So much going on in the EPA. Everything at once will keep you up to date. Amazing guests. What you doing? Come through and hang with Tony and Dave. Community driven. Bringing everything at once from around the way. Everything at once from around the way. Hey. Please listen. We love you. <laughs> everything at once. Everything at once. It's time to, int- to introduce this show. The best show on the face of the planet. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in today. We want to thank our Patreon producers, Brian G, Josh W, E and D, Nick G, and Sadie M. Patreon, it's an awesome way to support the show and say thanks. You can become a Patreon supporter by clicking the link below and choosing to be an intern, assistant, or producer level supporter. If being on the production team is too much pressure for you, you can also send any contributions using our Venmo at Everything at Once Studios. We now want to thank all the local businesses who supported this episode. These businesses get the Everything at Once stamp of approval and are critical members of the Everything at Once community. We couldn't do it without them. With winter approaching, are there any last minute details that you want to change or renovate around your home? Uh, I might, uh, but you know who to call. Yeah, Ghostbusters! No, no, Tony. No, not Ghostbusters. Solid State Construction. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Solid State. Yeah. Duh. (laughs) Solid State takes pride in all their home remodeling projects. Solid State specializes in bathroom remodeling, kitchen renovation, window and door installation, custom design work, and more, including painting, flooring, drywall, sidewalk, decks. Decks. Get your free quote today by calling Nick at 814-397-7854. Solid people, solid solid product, product, solid solid state state construction. construction. You know, Tony, with all these renovations from solid state, I think we might have kicked up some bad energy around here. Yeah, oh oh, yeah. Luckily, we know just the people to go see. I, I know it this time. It's Ghostbusters. No, Tony. Our friends at Cauldron and Thorn. Wow. I feel really dumb right now, and I can't believe I didn't think of Cauldron and Thorn, uh, the world's largest witchcraft and metaphysical shop, with everything a person needs to channel the spirit world. Practice some self-care. Find enlightenment. Curse your enemies. Protect yourself from your enemies. Bless your friends. Cleanse your space from negative energies. You can check out all the magical wares available at these for these different practices, we all love and enjoy at Cauldron and Thorn, 2724 West 8th Street, or online at cauldronandthorn.com. This week, we have an incredible guest for you. In a parallel universe, this was the first time that we ever started the podcast. In a parallel universe, um... I forgot what I was going to say, but I remembered it in that universe. In the parallel universe, you're the first podcast to do it without headphones on. This was, yeah, the fir- in a parallel universe, this is the first podcast we're doing without any headphones on. It's pretty wild. We're getting crazy. We're pulling out all the stops here from my man, Dan Brady, yeah. from the flagship comedy festival. We yeah. had you on last year just before it started. Just before it started. And uh, I mean, kind of left you all on a cliffhanger because we didn't know how it was going to happen. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I still remember that week we had, um, I think it was like 12 out of like 580 tickets sold. And that's yeah, scary. That's, um, and then like, as I'm driving up to Erie on that Wednesday, all of a sudden, like I keep getting text messages like, Hey, cause, uh, our headliner Brent Terhune had actually went on the Bob and Tom show. And, oh, nice. And Brent is a sweetheart so he said hey guys i'm gonna be here this weekend and like all of a sudden everything blew up and a lot of people uh started like sharing everything but it 
turned out to be a big success. Our first six shows sold out completely. The Brent show that. was like uh, 138 out of 150. Uh, to, the comics had a great time. A lot of people explored our city. It was great. It was a great experience. I can't wait for this year. Yeah, that's amazing, man. To see to go from twelve to almost sold out, yeah, and a lot of shows were sold out too, right? Yeah, it was um, the big ones we really needed, like uh, our headliner shows. We we for our Friday show with Learn More, we had added like twenty extra seats and stuff, and it was standing room only. <sighs> That's incredible, dude. Yeah, it was great. It was uh, a lot of people. It just it kind of felt like a lot of people didn't expect. Well, we didn't. To be fair, we didn't. We expected to be successful, but not on that level. You know. Yeah. Not. Then not to be able to have the money to rent out the Erie Playhouse this year, you right. know? That's, like, <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Yeah. That's, uh, I always like overshoot my things and then I'm always super excited when like I'm even anywhere close to my goals. Right. I mean, the Erie Playhouse has such a deep rooted, not necessarily fan base, but I mean, there's not a thing that happens there that doesn't sell out. Oh yeah. And, that, and I don't understand why they, you know, the other promoters in the city don't go, huh, instead of a comic that not a lot of people knows at a 2,000 seat place, why not add a 392 seat place? Right. Yeah. You know, it, it would make a lot more sense. And I feel like the play, like the playhouse kind of sticks to its name. You know what I mean? Plays. That's like their bread and mm -hmm. butter theater, stuff like that. But to have somebody coming in and mixing it up and bringing some comedy there, I think it only benefits the Playhouse as a whole, you know? Especially we have uh, Sean Patton, who he isn't uh, he isn't a huge name, but he uh, his most recent special is on Peacock. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, the cock. Number, number one on the cock. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he was on, uh, uh, I think it was the what is it late show with seth myers and stuff like that like he's he's very good he's a very intelligent comic and very very high energy and i've i saw his new hour that he is going to be bringing here and it's it's great it's uh it's it's really fun and i can't wait as uh not uh, just a promoter, but you know, as a comedy fan to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be incredible. That's so cool to have such a big name that has like a, a big special, you know what I mean? First one on the cock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And to actually have to deal with, uh, agents. That's something I'm not used oh, to. Shit. Yeah. It's, it's that big, huh? Oh man. It's, I, like, I, I try to be nice, but it's kind of almost like lizard brain speak talking to them. Like, for some reason in their business, everybody wants money, and I understand that. But sure. we can't just say, like, hey, how much do you need? It's always like, throw us out a figure of what you want. Do this. It's, no, no, just tell me where, where we can make. Tell me what yeah. it costs. Yeah, dude. Well, every, that's, like, such a, a big part of negotiation, and it's such a pain in the ass a lot of times, especially when it's, like, you know, Every, and, and that's like an agent's job too, is yeah. to advocate for their client and try to get them as much and money as possible. I understand that completely. Just tell me how much money you right, want to get yeah. where you can get. You well, know. if you're going to hit them with like a giant figure that's way above it, obviously you're just going to be like, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what they're hoping for, I think. Yeah. They don't want to throw out a number and it's just like oh, the highest it can go, you know, because you're yeah. not going to go, oh, you you want 10 grand? Well, why don't we give you 20? <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. And if you're going to offer like 10 grand and they're only expecting like two, it's, you know, it makes, it makes business sense, but that's definitely a struggle, dude. Yeah. And I mean, it's cool. Cause our other headliners, we got Rena calm and Derek Sheen. Uh, they're both kind of like, uh, the comics comics like Rena, uh, she's kind of famous for, uh, being the, uh, first comic to perform in all 50 States while living out of her vehicle. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Good yeah. for her. It was a Prius, and then it became a van. Van life. That's yeah. hot right now. Yeah, 100%. And then Derek Sheen's been performing in the Pacific Northwest for like 30-something years. He's, he, he knows a lot of people that everybody knows, but for whatever reasons or the other, he's just kind of never made it big. Hmm. I mean, there's plenty of those stories all over the place. Yeah. Absolutely, and it, it it's great to be bringing people like that and giving them a stage and getting that uh, the underground comedy yeah. side. Um, and you're still performing yeah. regularly. I see on Facebook, like I gotta ask how your uh, 
your Bob Belcher thing was. Oh, that's next Thursday. That's next that Thursday. Is, you would love this venue that it's happening at. It looks uh, so it's, fun, um, dude. Tell, tell us a little bit about the concept first. Uh, so it's essentially like, have you ever seen a Comedy Central roast? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's basically that idea, but everybody involved is playing a character from Bob's Burgers. So everybody's nice. role playing as a different yeah. character. Like you're I'm Bob. Gonna, Bob, I'll be That's, Bob. Are you going to shave the beard? Yeah, I will be shaving <laughs> oh, the hell beard. Yeah, dude. <laughs> It's, that's gonna be well, so that was funny. kind of like my my buddy's the booker at this uh, kind of it's a DIY venue. It's an old church that is uh, Nathan and Yakoba had some extra money and they bought during COVID and they brought my buddy Sean in to be the booker. And uh, he's like, if I do this show, you have to be Bob. Bob and yeah. I was like, yeah. I How's do. your Bob voice? I I I think I kind of already talked <laughs> like him. I don't know. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, not too much work there. Yeah, no, no. And I got a bunch of my friends are on it. It's going to be fun. Um, it's kind of kind of an idea I've, I w I've always wanted to do, but people kind of keep it. I kind of keep it like very easy, like Game of Thrones mm -hmm. or uh, Harry Potter. And then like, you know, Batman or Superman. Right. But this the Bob's ones is the first one I've ever seen. And it kind of opens up to like. How about we do this? What if yeah. we do this? Do Simpsons so. or a South Park or a whatever, you know? <laughs> right. And I think it's such a cool concept. And I think we're going to see a lot more of like the <clears throat> role playing type shows, you know what yeah. I mean? Where you perform as a character or you take on a character and are, you know, telling jokes as if you're that character and um, treating the other people as that character. I just think that's really fun and interesting in general. I've always been a fan of like role playing stuff like that. Do you take a little bit of a method acting approach to that? Like, have you been living as Bob for the past <laughs> couple burgers. months? Like, that is your. Uh, this is me. This isn't. I'm not <laughs> Dan Brady right now. I'm Bob. I'm sorry in advance, but I. The have wires to do got this. crossed, and I was pretending to be Archer for two weeks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's such a classic episode too of those ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. It, <laughs> <laughs> I've just been e eating <laughs> burgers every day. Every I've been training for this. <laughs> Thinking of uh, clever names for them to put on the special board. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I told – because we're all kind of writing and somebody wrote a joke like, hey, Bobby, I think the burger of the day is just autism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It, I, it, and the tickets are selling well, so it's, it's kind of great. I wasn't sure – with copyright and everything, but this falls under the parody law and right, stuff, yeah. so we can. You're adding use... enough creative value to yeah. it for it to be original. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I, I've i seen ones that are like the roast of Harry Potter or the roast of that orphan with magic powers. No. You know? <laughs> yeah, <It's... laughs> right? Classic. There's so many, so many routes, stuff like that can go on. I think that's a, a really cool, fun new concept that... Oh. I hope I see explored a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I want to, and with like uh, TikTok, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of like comedy game shows that are people are seeing and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I I kind of hope. I mean, I love doing stand up shows, but stuff like this really kind of helps you game better that, writing writing because right? it's not just writing roast jokes; it's writing roast jokes from a perspective of. You know, character. somebody that's not real. Yeah. Right. And I think that a lot of you, – you can gain a lot of traction that way through the social medias and through trending and stuff like that because tons of fucking people like Bob Bur Burgers and Bob Burger Clips and all that stuff. And if you get lumped into the right algorithm, you're just – you're off to the races. You know what I mean? Well, I guess uh, – I think it was yesterday the local Cincinnati entertainment pa pa uh, paper, the City Beat – uh, published a story on the roast oh, so sweet, like dude. and you know tickets are taken off from there plus this place commonwealth sanctuary i mean they just opened a couple months ago but they got like matt bronger coming up todd glass oh, um sweet. Todd uh glass rich is voss is coming nice. yeah like they're 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 bringing in some big names everything you want in a comedy club they are i mean i've i've performed there a couple of times for shows and it's just the crowds are always i don't know if it's the acoustics from it being an old church at a church choir up right you know i love it just, when they do that it it's just the the crowds are always hot it's always fun there and they're 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 not toxic they're paying everybody respectively so it's it's a rarity and uh, the comedy business to have, especially uh, with a bunch of like corporate clubs and stuff. Right. Yeah. 
but a, a lot of a lot of the corporate clubs had to do free shows and stuff this summer so like it's there's the winds have shifted in terms of like the standard uh after covid there's a lot of more diy stuff taking going off. on like before we recorded we talking about don't tell and stuff like mm-hmm. Those are selling out in cities where the club's struggling with, a, right. you know. Can you tell the people? Because I, 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 I talked about it. I saw them a little bit. Tell, tell the people a little bit about the don't tell stuff. So don't tells are, it's just this kind of idea that blew up right around COVID of like, uh, it, they started in cities like Chicago, New York, and L.A., but it, it's like a comedy show. You pay the money and then like 45 minutes to an hour before the show, you'll get an email of the location of where it's at. And they're all in all manners of places. Like uh, I think the one here tomorrow is going to be in a boutique um, downtown. Oh, I can't re- I think the dollhouse. Or oh, something shit. Like yeah. That. Point four. It's sold out. So I can tell anybody. Oh, that's I awesome. want you, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, nobody's going to see this until after yeah. it. And the show was great, by the way. Yeah, it was yeah. an awesome don't show. Yeah, don't yeah. tell. It Except that one thing. But yeah. We don't talk about yeah. that. Yeah. You know? right. <laughs> so it's like there's one in Pittsburgh that happens in that MMA gym. Or, oh, nice, um, dude. You know, so like they're finding all sorts of it. It reminds yeah. me of like the old rave scene you know what i mean where you just find out like the day before like oh it's going to be in this warehouse or it's going to be in this spot where they normally don't do anything at and now it's the same thing for comedy we just went to something like that i believe it was last summer it might have been the summer before but it was a banksy land thing you know we bought the tickets and it ended up being in some bike shop in pittsburgh yeah Yeah. in the attic of a bike shop Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i mean i like the concept uh i mean and they pay pretty well too but they kind of leave it in like the hands of the the inmates in terms of booking the shows and stuff, yeah. and not not everybody in charge of a don't tell show knows exactly how to promote or book a show, mm-hmm. and they try to do so many because you know they get paid every time, um, and like the way don't tell pays, it's very fast and very efficient. Like after I perform, I. The one show I did in Indianapolis, as I got off stage, I got a link in my email that says, congrats, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Here's a link to click for your payment. It was it was like I just did a, like, you know, a drug deal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, can you break this code and send it in yeah. the email? Like, <laughs> That's nice, though, dude. Yeah. I appreciate it, that. They're very efficient. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sometimes it, it, like, the show I did was in a place called the Ice Bar, and it just... <laughs> the crowd they brought in is not the crowd that normally goes there. Yeah. And you could tell that a lot of people were uncomfortable and then the stage is just too far away. And But yeah. it's... You make do in those kinds of situations when you're setting up like a flash thing. Yeah. I mean, you try your best, but like I... I didn't do great, but then the comic after me, Dyke Michaels, he didn't do great. I'm like, okay, it's not it's, me. Yeah, it's right? That, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just not the spot. It's like one of the few times I root for somebody to bomb too. Like, let oh, it not be me. Let yeah. it not be me. <laughs> right. Let's suffer together, please. But, and then we have like a common enemy. You know, obviously it's not us. Yeah. We're fucking let, great. And all it's, you do is you fist pump go, man, that fucking crowd didn't deserve yeah. me the Night King. Yeah, right. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> That's awesome, though. I'm really excited to see stuff like that going on and things like that happening, especially around here. I think that... Uh, Comedy has a good put, like a good home in here in Erie, and yeah. to see it get promoted and utilized and doing stuff like the don't tells, like it's good shit. You know what I mean? I mean, and then like, um, I know the 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 local scene here is growing, and now those comics are starting to do their own shows. I I can't remember the name of the skate park, but I know there's a comedy show that's going to be run out of one in hmm. February. Um, oh, nice. I don't know. Oh, out of the maybe i don't know if there's a skate park but there is a surf and skate shop maybe that's maybe something like that yeah i'm not on the pulse that much but yeah i mean it's starting to grow and then you know i i just think like i said there's we saw it last year of uh just people supporting the up and coming the yeah. oh that's different let's try something else because the same old same old and eerie hasn't worked for 10 years exactly right no that that's 100 percent correct and if you don't change if, if nothing changes nothing changes 100 uh, percent. and it's just kind of at this point where like that's the spirit of the festival it's diy till i die you yeah know, it's it's just out there and doing the damn thing, dude. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we wanted this to happen here, so we kind of got to do it ourselves, and we've had to. Uh, I mean, uh, we, 
we helped out a lot of people last year and that's starting to spread the for a little bit there we were worried about the sponsorship money but that's starting to roll in and well after you have a huge success us. like yeah. last year it's going to you know that's fucking awesome yeah and uh when is it scheduled? It's not till like springtime, right? Yeah, it's uh, April twenty fifth to the twenty eighth. It's so gonna it's be the, sweet. The last weekend in April, which we figure uh, that's the real last weekend before all the festivals start. So mm-hmm. we just kind of figure, why not get a jump? Yeah. Plus, you got like less less competition as far as getting talent goes too. Mm-hmm. Being a little bit earlier, having your own kind of time slot there, definitely beneficial. Very smart. How many locations are you do you have this year? Uh, we are still working on one, but probably four or five again. And, uh, for a festival that's unique too, because a lot of festivals happen in big cities like, uh, Indianapolis. And I don't know if you've ever driven through there, but you're mm-hmm. not going to make it to another venue in 30 minutes. Right. Sure aren't. So it's just, we, we kind of have the ability to not just be in the same place the entire time. Yeah, that's super cool too. Last year, what you guys were at 1020 Collective. 1020 was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you were up at the Marriott or the Hilton on Peach Street. Uh, on the Bayfront. Oh, on, on the Bayfront. Bayfront. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's where we did two of our headlining shows, uh, and then we were at Room 33, which we're going to be back there this oh, year. Oh yeah, they're great. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see them do a little bit more comedy too. That room is, is it's just a cool room. It's a cool area. Great for bands. Great for musicians. Great. I can't imagine it not being great for comedy. It, it, it's, it's it's been hit or miss over the years. Yeah. I mean, they've worked with us on stuff and some other people who have been in Erie, but it's it's kind of the crowds can be great and they can be bad too. Yeah. You know, for sure. It seems like uh, <laughs> it's one of the. It has one of the like the vibes of like a real like, you know. Like a sm- biggest kept secret type place, you know. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I mean, that's the whole goal. I mean, it's like a speakeasy. You have to right. go through the fucking hidden wall and all that stuff. But I could see, I could see. I think a lot of people just go there too to like hang out or to eat or whatever. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They might not be too interested in a comedy club. But if you market well, it as a specific comedy night, I can't. That's like this year we're essentially shutting it down, and the only yeah. way to end is going to be to get a ticket to see yeah. the comedy. Well, the issue last year with the show is a lot of people came in and then ordered food, and the food came when the show started. So like the first two or three comics, yeah, everybody's eating. this guy uh, just <laughs> ate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody's just, too busy eating their oh, food man, it was, yeah. nobody wants to laugh either with a mouthful of food obviously that's like the hard part of being like a, a club headlining comic is that at 45 minutes everybody will get their checks and stuff and you're gonna have like five to ten minutes of nobody mm-hmm. people just having fake candles trying to read what's on their check right you know and a lot of places mandate that too well i went to the mothership last summer um down in austin we took yeah. a trip down there and they don't serve all they do is drinks you know what i mean and you have to order like i don't remember how much it was it was like ten dollars in drinks which was two liquid deaths for me that but and i was at the uh comedy cellar in new york a couple months ago and they just have like finger foods but like they don't give you the check until the last person's like almost done performing yeah. mm-hmm. you know? but those are specific comedy clubs that know that shit yeah. you know what i mean they're like we're gonna this is the way we do it because we're trying to emphasize comedy you know what i mean we're trying to make it a good environment for that it's also you know the the worry of people just get up and leave too without paying checks and oh yeah how do you do that the right way Mm -hmm. you know it's some places like commonwealth uh they they just have somebody with a little sign that says last call and you put your little check up and your little uh like little menu stand Mm -hmm. thing and scan and pay yeah but i mean other th- I mean, they've had a couple comics get off before then, and then that's just kind of chaos, you right. know, trying to keep everybody there. But yeah, it's it's there's no right way to do it really at yeah. the end, unless you just have everybody come up and get their food and then go back to their seats. Yeah, it's uh, there's definitely an element of uh, you know, careful planning and intuitiveness to be able to figure out how to do that properly and do that well. Well, it's like. And then once you understand that a comedy club, the product they are selling is not comedy. No, they're mm-hmm. selling they drinks and food. They they don't care. They don't care if that comic crush. They care if everybody pays their two drink minimum. Though. Right. That's what they care about. And it's a lot of people don't understand that. Like they, those 
those institutions aren't there. I mean, they're there for you, but they're not there for you. They're there for their. They got to make money, dude. They got to keep the doors open. They got to keep profit in the owner's pocket or the whatever the group or the corporation that owns it. And like, I understand that and get that to some level. Honestly, I've been like really struggling with that whole concept recently, especially like with social media and all the other things. Like, how are they ethically able to, as a human, like? Ex, be so exploitative you know yeah. what i mean well it's it's like a the way i understand it it's just it's like a it's a two-way street like they give you the the money or the opportunity to perform get your name out there put some money in your pocket and you're a marketing tool like yeah. they're yeah. paying you you're like you're not giving them money to come in like they right. expect you to bring the people to buy their stuff yep. exactly 100 percent. so you're and that's why like a lot of comics are annoyed like oh social media stuff oh doing this and then they just sit there and complain that they don't get book, and it's like you got to dance. Yeah, you got to do it, dude. Like I, it's so annoying, and right. it's really hard. Everybody makes fun of social media stuff, and like, oh, the you know this person. Nobody fucking ever influence. likes it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's hard. It's that, hard work. That one point one million likes that didn't happen overnight. No. That was posting five times, five times a day. Right. You know, making new comment content every day, making sure it's perfect every day right i feel like people just will latch on to the the person or the situation that was the easiest like someone who does it once and just gets so fucking lucky and that's what they base it off mm. of you know like yeah. they don't look at the people that put in all the hard work they look at like the lottery ticket struck by lightning well, it's the end game of joe rogan right now like everybody looks and sees what he has right now but like man yeah 2008 people were laughing at him doing this 2009 mm, whenever right. he first started like that's it's not long ago but it's long ago in terms of like how media Hush. evolves right mm. and it's i think it's like really easy to to like anybody that i know that's like doing well at their art whether it be comedy whether it be music whether it be anything like that fucking is on their social media game you know what i mean they are yeah. posting they have videos they have reels they're active all over the place and like sometimes things don't get like you know what i mean you'll see a post and it's got like two likes and you're like why the fuck are these people even doing it or like i don't i yeah. don't think that because i'm aware that that's the fucking game that's the struggle but like it's i feel like it's easy as an outsider like before i started doing all this stuff for the podcast and everything to be like what why the fuck are they even doing that like, like nobody gives a shit. Have you seen the clip of that uh, that woman who they're like, "Are you a Trump supporter?" And she's like, "No." And the woman threw a beer bottle at her, and the beer hit the back of the ball, and she chugged it. Mm. She's now headlining clubs just from that clip. That's amazing. You know, and she already had a social media following in the first place. <clears throat> there are several comics right now that are. I'm not saying they're not good, but they got good at. Um, promoting themselves. It's not making reels. It's not making TikToks. That's advertisements for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So a club can look at your TikTok because now whenever you submit to anything, it's what's your Instagram handle? What's yeah. they don't they don't care to promote you. They want to see what you can promote for them. And that right. that's true in so many different facets too. Like not only in comedy but in music. Like how many spot how many weekly Spotify listeners do you have yep. or monthly Spotify listeners do you have? And it also goes into I heard somebody talking about like publishing a lot too. Like yeah, we're not going to book you as a writer or sell you a book contract. You have 500 people that follow you on Instagram. You have a thousand people that follow you on Instagram. They want that audience that's already built in so they can, they don't have to promote it. You already promoted it. It's not breaking through to the market. You're already fucking in the market. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a little dirty, but I mean, it, it, it probably keeps a lot of people who are incredibly talented out of it, but oh, it's yeah. also like, that's part of the fucking game. Like you said, if you, if you want to be the performing monkey, you got to fucking dance. Uh-huh. And you had to dance the correct way. And you have and, to dance good. You have to be a good fucking dancer. And then you had to put work into your craft every night. And then, like, I mean, you you essentially have to sell your soul to be a good stand-up, you know? Yeah. And it's like um, the clubs, a lot of clubs have uh, toxic up, upper management. I mean, um, certain clubs in certain localities don't book local comics. Yeah. Um, it's just... They're, uh, you know, every step of the way. But now, like, you know, 
it's being 2024 there are so many different ways to open a door now and that upsets a lot of people like i have the ability we as a collective comedy wise had the ability to put out a, a special mm -hmm. every like if i wanted to every year right uh just with youtube and everything it's, it's oh yeah uh, it's they hate that shit they fucking hate it. Well, you and, can't gatekeep like you used to. Yeah, and a lot of people are like, are they really special? No, it's it's 45 minutes on the YouTube. You know, it, that's just the word we have, you know, latched onto it. And like, yeah, George Carlin only used to be able to do three, one every three years. But that was when that shit cost a lot. Yeah. I can record one with my cell phone camera and it will probably be okay. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a huge... And I... It's just chopping out that middleman, you know what I mean? That guy who, the agent, the booking people, the fucking clubs, the production company, all that shit just kind of goes away when you're able to do it yourself. I stay preaching this, but like, if if you understand that to be, be big, you're not going to make money right away. You no. can't make money right away. So like, you have guys like Mark Norman, Joe List, uh... Sam Morrill and a bunch of other people instead of like Netflix, like Andrew Schultz. Are you familiar with him? Mm -hmm. um, Netflix told him he had to change all these jokes and he said, no, thank you. And he, he already paid like $2.1 million to produce it. Right. So he just released it on his own and he made something like $10.1 million on it. It's incredible. It, it's <laughs> We don't ne – I mean, the industry would be really helpful, but necessarily you don't need the industry anymore. You mm -hmm. just need to be good. And, yeah. uh, that's and have another, the audience. Yeah, that's Build another audience. struggle for a lot of people because, you know, crowd work, heckle stuff is really big right mm -hmm. now. And it's – you know, you you do – you you know, are seeing an uptick of people talking during shows and stuff like that and, like, comics engaging it. And, you know, if that's what – you want to do that's cool but you know if you want to be great if, if you want to have all this fame and everything you have to be good too right and it, that's the hard part there's some people that get the promoting down there's some people that get the comedy basis down but like the ones that can get those together those those people are going to go far right <laughs> it's not just a, uh, a a silver bullet type aspect you don't just it's not just one thing. It's a conglomerate of a ton of different things. Oh, it's yeah. being social media savvy. It's having good jokes. It's being good at crowd work and catching those like right clips and the right things that are trending that people like. And it, it there's just so much more that goes and into it. And it's like being a good hang too. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, um, you make, make more money making friends than uh, making enemies for sure. I mean, that's one of, the, one of the main reasons why we booked some of the headliners we did. I mean, like, Sean is a killer comic. Sean is incredible. He's probably the best comic out there without a top-rated Netflix special. Mm -hmm. But he's also an incredible hang. He will sit there. He will tell you what you want to know if you ask him a question. He's he's a genuine, genuine human being for a comic. He'll talk about, like, on the road with David Cross and stuff like that. Like, it's it's that's that's an experience we're bringing in for everybody else that's coming. Yeah. It's huge. That's a huge draw. And I think that it not only there'll be people who want to come to the comedy festival as far as like performers go, just because they see that yep. he's going to be there. They're like, Oh shit. He, this, these guys are fucking serious. They got, and we got a couple of those. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, last year, you know, there are a lot of people were upset that they weren't picked and, you know, kind of held a grudge, but you know, some of those people still submitted because like you, you can hate us all you want, but <laughs> I, uh, I made sure everybody saw how good the festival was last year. We had a couple of no-shows, so I just, I think uh, that's probably the most I'll ever post an Instagram story, like 50, 50 pics a day or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's just, a lot of pics. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to be there, I'm going to show you what you're Yeah, missing, what you, you know? exactly, dude. Exactly. You got to be able to check your ego a little bit. I mean, to be a performer, you got to have a little oh, bit yeah. of an ego. But So I can understand, you know, if I was like a comedian and I didn't get picked, I'd be like, these guys are fuck Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. They're yeah. fucking idiots. <laughs> and you got to think like that to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, maybe don't hold a resentment or be pissed off, but – or like – you know, hold a long lasting resentment, but I think it's okay to be pissed off about being rejected. But you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's also like, 
you get a lot of comics that are at the same level and mm-hmm. you get 60 of those comics and it's like how do i chip Pick away? one from yeah, the other yeah, yeah yeah i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of comics that will the first jokes like they'll just talk about how they're fat or hey this is what i look like or like i'm from new york i'm walking here yeah. it's <laughs> new york comics we get it you live there yeah. okay it's it's cool it's i don't I don't care. Show me your material that is not about where you live. Right. Like, but it's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of people that are good, but it's just like, meh. Meh. And plus, I think that like being unique and saying, and staying away from those classic tropes, like fat jokes or whatever is, shows a higher degree of skill than just sticking on those things that like, or like making fart jokes and shit, you know what I mean? I was at we were at a uh, uh, comedy festival in Pittsburgh over the summer, and this oh, yeah. is this is just my um, like how comedy is for me. And like a lot of the comics were funny, but it was like a lot of like sex jokes over and over again. It got kind of some old. comics were some Steel comics City were very AF. Much, uh, I don't remember. Was I don't it? Remember what it was? But called. the but the headliner and he went in a totally different direction than anyone else. But it was Kyle Kinane. Oh, okay. And like when he like told he had this bit and it was just like so off the wall and I laughed so motherfucking hard like mm-hmm. but it was just like sometimes the comics can blend together even like if they're telling the jokes well if it's the same type of material it gets old after a while. Yeah, right. we were we were our decision for a headliner to share was between Kyle Kinane and Sean Patton. Yeah. So. He was really funny, and I think that also depends on what kind of comedy festival you want to throw, yeah. you know? And I mean, if it's a, a dirty joke p- comedy festival, then you're going to have the people that are all selling dirty sex jokes and shit, yeah. you know? It's just uh, the vibe that you're trying to put out and what you're trying to brand yourself as. Yeah, I mean, I, I just... The issue I have with clubs is the crowd of people they attract. Mm-hmm. Like, well, this was at a theater. yeah. And honestly, it was kind of disappointing because their audio was not loud enough. Hmm. I don't know. I in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, yeah. Pittsburgh, yeah. yeah. It was. It was a good. It was good. I mean, we could still hear them, but I would have. I would have liked it to be like quite a bit louder, personally. And that makes such a big difference too, is having like all those right tools. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being able to fill the room, and uh, with sound. You know what I mean? So people in the back are still having a good experience. Kyle Kinane's great, but like the thing is, he he does. He does like every festival reaches out to him. I I know of like four festivals he was on last year. Like I don't know of any festivals that Sean was on. So that's mm-hmm. like that's a that's, draw. Yeah, that's a bigger. I mean, not just for <coughs> the crowd, but for the comics. Like mm-hmm. why submit to us when we have the same headliner as Flyover Festival and you know a bunch of other ones. Yeah. So it, ma- it makes the decision to go to yours harder, too, because it's like, oh, do I have to go to Erie, or can I go to one yeah. that's somewhere else and see the same people? You can't be unique if you aren't. Exactly. You know, and it's, you know, like we have um, Derek Sheen, again, he he doesn't live over here, but I, I've heard he's a sweetheart. And uh, we talked about this, but, like, he promotes everything he does, and if he enjoys, he will promote and he has some famous friends on his timeline so yeah. same with rena too so it's uh ramon rivas is really good he's from cleveland too so it's you know um and then next year we're we don't know where we're, we're not going to go anywhere bigger than the playhouse right now but it's kind of you know we we need bigger names next year so more dealing with agents mm-hmm. yeah and that's Ooh. such a huge part yeah. too is having uh having guests that promote themselves too. You yeah. know what I mean? It makes a big difference. Like even in our numbers, if our guest has a strong social media presence already built up versus somebody who doesn't really promote themselves a whole heck of a lot, come on the show. And we're going to have both people on the show anyway, because it's not really about yeah. getting a million views for us at this time or anything like that. We want to give people a platform and give them the opportunity to be able to speak and be able to share and you know, speak to their crowd and speak to our audience and their audience and all that stuff. But it definitely makes a huge difference having a, a, an individual on here that has a following, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And that's, and it's hard to not just like book and look for those people. Oh yeah. You know? Like it's hard to not just be like, well, you know, they're not the best, but Hey, they got 25,000 yeah. people on Instagram. 
I mean, there's uh, there is a comic right now, and she's she's headlined in a bunch of places, and she's good. I've seen her tape. She's really she's really good, but um, you she you look at the video and she sends, and it's oh, she has two hundred thirty thousand Instagram followers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. You're, you're yeah. Pop- you're serious. <laughs> you're yeah. popular, or you, you paid for those. And then with like sponsorships, I can be like, hey. Uh, we have people that have this and this, and we can have them promote this for you. Right. So, like, you know, and sponsorship for us is not just monetary. Like, <laughs> you want to give us money, that's great. We got email packages and everything. Mm-hmm. We can work something out. But it's also, like, giving the comics a bit of eerie. Like, um, we're working with a place here, can't really say anything yet, but, you know, to give gift cards for the local comics, uh, the comics to eat. And then, you know, possibly we're working on like a package to get them to go out to the national comedy center and stuff like that. Oh yeah. So. I mean, that, that's awesome. And I think that's huge too. I mean, those fringe benefits or the, the, the riders are, are big, you know yeah. I mean? That makes a difference if I'm going to be going, especially somewhere where I'm traveling, if I don't have to pay for food, that's one less thing that I have to worry about. You know I, what I mean? I reached out to liquid death. Oh, yeah? Because I don't know if you know this, but they'll sponsor just about anything. I better call them, too, then. Yeah, no, I <laughs> the, the the drummer from Hollywood Undead, he's the one that emailed me like, hey, man, can you please hit us up in February? We would love to send you some, some water, but I'm not thinking that far ahead right now. Yeah. I'm like, I get that. Absolutely. Should you be running a company with that, Mike? But, hey, you know, free water. Yeah, free water. I'll take it. And... Yeah. It's it's hard to schedule that far in advance too. Like we're looking oh, at yeah. we're looking at venues for our uh, premiere that we're doing for our short film that we're making, and it's hard to because we want to release it in July, and right now it's hard to tell where you know who's going to be available, what's going on, what's going to be happening in July because a lot of places don't have aren't booked out that far yet. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, well, and it's kind of like what you were saying too with. Uh, uh, the comedy festival last year, it's like, oh my God, no one's buying tickets. No one's yeah. buying tickets. And then right at the end, it's like, boom. So you oh, take yeah. that kind of risk too, you know, not right. Pe- people aren't buying like four months in advance. You don't know exactly how, how especially when you don't sell. have a set date on when your event yeah. is going to be. Um, I mean, have you guys considered the eerie movie house? We, oh yeah. We, that's def- we're definitely going to do a, a small showing there and then potentially a bigger showing at a, we have a few different places in mind. Um, as far as having a bigger showing for people, but we're definitely going to do like a cast and crew and like a couple. You want to talk about a fascinating human being, man. Craig, he's from death metal drummer to self-talk coder. Nice. Yeah. Is he the, he's the owner? The owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah. have to talk to him eventually at some point, but we're definitely going to do something there. And maybe we'll do a couple of things there. Who knows? Yeah. You know, if we, it depends on, it also depends on how many tickets we sell. You know, if we sell over a hundred tickets, we're not going to be able to have it at, yeah the eerie movie house unless we have like two or three nights um but if we sell i don't know 50 60 tickets like 30 40 tickets yeah absolutely i used to run uh i they got really good at the end but i used to run comedy shows out of there like covid covid real well killed a lot of things but it killed uh because i was having like sellout shows there every, once a month every week and i was bringing in a headline or a feature it's awesome yeah i was starting to make money and then COVID just like no and then we never really had the crowds back after that but yeah it's it's tough dude especially to like rebuild that momentum when uh the wind's taken out of your sails but that's definitely a place that is high on the list yeah uh, as far as like having the premiere at and stuff at least we're at least going to have a small cast and crew premiere there for sure right yeah i mean uh craig doesn't do all the booking and stuff he's now kind of he freelance has that mm-hmm. out but it's a really cool place I yeah mean, he has a i've lot gone of to old, shows there before yeah old school arcade games yeah. and stuff in there yeah it'll be a fun spot we're looking forward to it and uh can't wait to see where it, where it all ends up you know what i mean playhouse would be super cool that's definitely a place we're thinking about we've talked been talk i talked with brenton uh bainbridge from feed um pos- about possibly collaborating on some stuff there uh, there's a few different places. There's a few different options for us right now, and it just depends on how things settle out for us a little bit. Once this, uh, once our pre-sale Indiegogo yeah. crowdfunding pushes over, we'll have a better idea of what kind of uh, thing we're looking at. Plus, there will be like some different things going on, like post Indiegogo. Once we get more 
like closer towards the premiere too you know i'm hoping that we sell a bunch of tickets then once it's at once we get a date locked down and once uh we're able to like show the film a little bit get like one of our buddies nick at uh eerie reader is gonna we're gonna give him like a screener copy or something like that and he's gonna write a review for us so and i'm going on the news next week um watch it the four at four four oh, four yeah 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 so hopefully that'll push some people we'll sell some tickets who knows you know the sky's the limit and we're just uh we're really excited about how things have been going so far man pause the tape he was on the Ford Four. I was on the Ford Four. Yeah, but yeah, it didn't a couple have, weeks ago. It was, was a couple um, weeks ago. It wasn't next. It week. was incredible. Tons of people awesome. bought tickets. Yeah, we yeah. had the just fucking mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it, it's good to see people having successful ventures and going out in the arts community, like yeah. thriving and you know growing and stuff. And we're just hoping to be a small part of that around here. It's yeah, good I stuff. mean. The eerie news, uh, the the four or four and stuff, all that stuff that they're doing with that, and like we went on, I went on last year. Well, right before I recorded, I literally walked. Yeah, out I remember came down here. Um, we sold like, I think it was like within two hours of me going on, we sold like a hundred. Like that's like it. Stuff started pushing. Fingers crossed, like, yeah. man. I mean, I mean actually, like, that happened. Yeah, it, it, happened. Happened. it happened. It happened. Yeah. It happened. 100 people bought tickets. It was you guys are mind kings. blowing. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't say kings, but we're trying our best out <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> no, th those guys over there are great. John's a good guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's a real good dude. He's a uh, the once we start once we like ran and cross paths on social media from both of us promoting our podcasts, you know, he, he, he's always been supportive and helpful and yeah, that's a huge good. Lending hand for sure. And you need that, man. You yeah. need that help. You need yeah, that support. Especially in Erie. I mean, you know, it's always like, I don't know much about like the music scene and stuff, but it just seems like the same people are doing the same things. And it's just kind of hard to break through and break out of the monotony, but we need to. It's yeah. I feel like in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of musical guests on and I feel like you do still have those names yeah. that you know, but like there's a lot, the there's a lot of cool bands that are, they're definitely getting their fair share right. lately. And there's some people that like are almost retired bands too, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? That will play like Celebrate Erie and that's like their show of the year, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, I mean, a lot of people people getting on that and stuff yeah yeah i mean at least it's not a baby crowd surfing yeah no nah, well that was the best part dude if you ask me the worst part of that whole thing is that Flo Rida played in Cincinnati the next week. And you know what didn't happen? They didn't give him a baby? No. Well, <laughs> Cincinnati just doesn't have love for Flo Rida like we do, yeah. man. Like, Here's my baby. You look lovely. Here's a child. Oh, my God. That's so ridiculous, dude. I can't believe uh, that I, actually happened. I think that just goes to show the... Uh, the loving and friendly and neighborly nature of Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's right. You should definitely come in and check out this festival if you're from out of town. Yeah. Because we'll just, we'll just give we you a baby. Give you baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a baby with every ticket. Yes. One baby per person, we promise. <laughs> we'll make it happen for you. No, but uh, it's good to see the new people and stuff like that. And I think yeah. that more people are traveling around too, around here, as far as the music goes, people are getting into Buffalo and Cleveland and Pittsburgh and moving around and there's new people and there's like the old staples too. It, I don't know. It's a good little tight knit group. I think among our community. That's good. At yeah. least that's growing. You know? It's growing. Yeah. And, uh, our buddy, Jim Franks, who does his open mics was on the show a while ago in July. It was pretty fun. So like there's, People say always say there's like nothing to do around here, but we like I feel like a lot of people are trying really fucking hard to have something to do around here. Yeah, there's definitely stuff to do around here. It's just you have to um go out and do it. You have to look yeah. for it too, dude. You can't just sit on like good things aren't gonna show up to you sitting on your couch watching Netflix all the time. You know what I mean? You got to talk to people. You got to use the fucking powerful means of social media that yeah. we all despise and hate and. Uh, see what's going on you know There's i keep in cincinnati i keep getting i don't i i do my facebook algorithm keeps showing me these ads for uh it's a fighting league in a place called mount orb ohio which mm. is like 20 miles outside of cincinnati but it, they dress up like knights and just like oh, mma nice. fight with their swords and everything oh, that sounds, that so sounds cool. pretty dope dude. yeah 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> people are doing weird shit. It's good. I feel like I feel like something that Erie could could use that a lot of big cities do have is like a place and I hate it because I hate like mainstream for the most part, but a place that's just like popular. You know, like it is the spot because I feel like that draws uh, the crowds. Yeah. Like local out out of town. We don't have a place in Erie that's like this is the spot to be. This is the bar you need to. This mm-hmm. is the club you need to be at. I right. mean, they closed down Sherlock's and Park Place and all well, that. Yeah. Yeah. They. I mean, the Cell Block, Sherlock's, Park Place, Darksider. I can't believe they closed down Darksider and uh, the Crooked Eye. Way before that, going yeah. back. I mean, we have the we have the King's Rook, but that's like I love the King's Rook. Shout out to the King's Rook. Johnny does an awesome job uh, booking bands and stuff there, but. Uh, that that has like it's the countercultural place like that's the 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 uh, yeah tag that's that where the hippies and the weird it. people go the, yeah our people you know no, our yeah. people and we love it but like there's not a place that's like your like pop main yeah. place for no, people uh, to go no hundred percent yeah and and you got to have that as much as we despise it but you know what Erie does have that I've been seeing a lot of that your your night thing kind of reminded me of this we do have our own um, pro wrestling league yeah yeah yeah. Uh, PWR, right? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I haven't been yet, but I really want to check it out. Personally, I've always been a big fan of the narratives in wrestling, so I'm, yeah. I've got like high expectations probably for it because I'm used to WWF and WWE and the New World Order. and it, We want a wrestler on the show. Yeah, if one of you wrestlers out there are listening. Um. Oh, man, who's the big one? In the, there, there is a guy who has... Oh, God, I can't remember his name, but he's pretty well known the indie guy. I mean, there's a uh, Aaron Omega Draven. Um, I think he's a car mechanic or something like that. But there's a couple of people in this area that are somewhat big names. That yeah, I mean, people would. people go to those fucking fights every month or every yeah. other biweekly or how often are they, they have at it? the Avalon? Mm-mm. No, they aren't they at a they're at like a fun. It, it's like. Some sort of fun name. It's like a sports arena or like a like a sports training area. I can't remember the name of it, which is it's just bad investigative journalism on my part. But especially, you brought it up. Yeah, especially <laughs> when I'm talking about wanting to go and stuff. I don't even know where they're at. But they are somewhere, and they do it pretty regularly, and I well, see there's, it. Well, there's two promotions in Erie. Okay. There's Pro Wrestling Revenge and Pro Wrestling Rampage, and one split off from the other. So, mm. like, they were um, – it's kind of like a old – a sports hall, but it's like a dusty VFW that's over by the uh, Value Home Center off of 38. Okay. And then another one, uh, Big Lee Jong Machezi. That's the guy's name. You could probably reach out to him and get him on the podcast. I bet He's we done could. a lot of big, big League John. Big League John, if you're out there. If yeah. you're not, ex- check your DMs. You know what's so funny? And like, I don't talk about this much, but when I was younger and like getting into college and like public speaking and stuff, Learning how to public speak, I based it off of like the like Roddy Piper promos yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. younger, or like not so much Hulk Hogan because he's like, hey, brother, you know, just like, but like the like smarter like uh, like Jake the Snake Roberts, yeah. Robbie, Roddy Piper, like a little bit of Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, take out the expletives, but like the energy and confidence mm-hmm. they bring, it's like such a good way to learn to go out there and just talk at people. Yeah, uh, one a uh, friend of mine. Some of the best comedy advice, he's like, talk to the crowd like you know they want to fuck you. Yeah. Because that is a level of confidence <laughs> that you have to kid right. yourself into having. Yeah. Plus, then you can't fuck up. If you know they already are down to fuck, you, mm-hmm. you, you, there's no wrong answers. I feel like that could only be dangerous if you get, like, a little bit too excited about it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I just saw that new uh, Zac Efron wrestling movie, The was, Iron Claw. Was it good? Oh, it's sad as hell. Uh, do you know Aww. anything about the Von Erich family? I know a little bit, yeah. So it's so fat, so, so sad oh, that I, the I movie actually about. had to leave out a whole brother. Because mm. it's like four out of five kids died in a seven year time period, and only one of them was like natural causes. Like three of them were suicides. Isn't that the one with uh, the kid from. Shameless. Well, shameless. Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. Jeremy well, Allen yeah. White. Yeah, and that looked Efron. really good. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's good. Uh, and for like a casual person with like, you know, it's it's good. Um, I'd be mean, sad as hell. Yeah. Uh, Last good wrestling movie I saw was Peanut Butter Falcon, and that was pretty fucking excellent. 
<laughs> with Shia LaBeouf and uh, mm, that I d- kid. I didn't he trains with Down syndrome. I didn't to be a see pro that. wrestler. I think the, good. I think the only wrestling movie I've ever seen. No, I've seen two. The last one was Nacho Libre. You now that yeah. man, good old Jack Black. Oh, you uh, can't go wrong with him. Though. There was a movie about like WCW in the late nineties. I forget what the name of the movie was. With um, D- uh, David Arquette. Yep, yep. And David Arquette actually became a professional wrestler off of that. Do you know he he's had a semi-successful pro wrestling career? I did not I had know no that. Idea. Yeah, he was one of the people that helped. Uh, uh, um, Luke Perry's son get into pro wrestling. Jungle hmm. uh, now wrestling under the moniker Jungle Jack Perry. But yeah, it's awesome. I feel like pro wrestling is a. Well, this is a weird turn we've taken, but I like it. I dig it. I feel like pro wrestling is like in the shadows. Like people don't want to admit that they like it, but it has such an influence on so oh, yeah. many factors oh, yeah. of, of uh, pop culture and. Look society. at all the great people that have come from pro wrestling. We got like The Rock. We got Stone Cold well, Steve yeah, Austin. Look at the number one paid actor. Yeah. Rock. Started as a wrestler. Uh, Dave Batista. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, too. Cena. John Cena. Cena. Yeah, but you, he's tough because, no, I'm not going to do it. Do it. You can't see him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like listening to the radio. Have you seen that, uh, <laughs> that one clip of a video where he's, like, interviewing an old lady, and she's like, my granddaughter said I won't be able to see you? And he's like, <laughs> oh, yes, I was a rebel rouser back in my day. Oh, man. I haven't seen that, but that sounds fucking, that sounds like gold. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I feel so bad for John Cena. He just... He'll never escape that, dude. Yeah. Well, well I don't know. The Rock got, got away from what he's fucking cooking. Oh, uh, have you, if you ever see anything that has John Cena on it, like on any of the social medias, everything in the post is like, that guy's talking to no one. Oh, well, who is, you know, well, why are they just showing nobody on screen? It has not, it is, I just saw one the other day. It is not lowered in intensity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's still wrestling too, isn't he? I have no idea. Not. Not so, I mean, here and there, but he's kind of in the role of The Rock now, and it looks like The Rock might be coming back. But. Ooh, that's crazy, dude. I can't believe that he would come back to wrestling after it like, would, uh, all his, his success. Well, his his cousin, his cousin is the current champion, Roman Reigns, and Roman's like, I think he's like 300 days away from beating Hulk Hogan's all-time reign. Nice. That's wild. I've always want. I used to do this a lot when I was younger, when I was like really into wrestling. I've always wanted to do this to a guest, and I wouldn't because it's so rude, but I've always wanted to ask him a question and then hit him with, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dan, how's the flagship comedy? It doesn't matter how it is. You know? <laughs> yeah. Interesting turn of events. We've gone from comedy to pro wrestling i i mean i think there's it's a all lot entertainment of, though i actually i uh i know a couple of stand-up comics that were trained to be indie pro wrestlers and stuff and they say like in terms of energy and trying to build a crowd and stuff there's a lot of crossovers in between the two yeah do you parallel th- processing do you think people are more likely to laugh at your jokes if they look like they can kick your ass <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you could also intimidate people. That could be a whole thing in comedy. Just intimidate people into laughter almost. Well, it's like, um, uh, uh, man, all the stuff with Matt Reif oh, yeah. recently. It's uh, somebody has this joke. Um, he's starting to blow up, but he's like, that's why we don't trust hot comics. Because the good ones aren't hot. Tom hmm. Segura isn't hot. Right. Mark Kreischer isn't hot. <laughs> Dave Chappelle isn't hot. Like, this isn't a hot profession. So whenever somebody who is hot comes along, it's like, wait a minute. This we is... don't trust you. Yeah. Have you seen Chappelle's new special yet? No, I haven't. I haven't watched it yet either. It's on my list of things to do, though. What about this has, like, really been hot lately? What about the Cat Williams thing on oh, that, man, uh, Shannon dude. Sharp uh, podcast? <sighs> what a coincidence I that he announced, Ca- it, uh, he announced it to her two days after that blew up. What oh. a coincidence coincidence dude i love cat williams too i think he is fucking he's like probably top five com- comedians of all time i mean i can't say because he's from cincinnati so is like he? yeah 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 uh they like to but it's just uh it's one of those things it it's he it's very it's an awful big coincidence that he just announced this like arena to her two days you know what i After mean it, like yeah and then everybody's like yeah, he called people out, but he did it for a purpose. Like, I would be a lot more impressed if he had done this and then, like, no Not tours. Just or ghosted. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you got, I feel like 
with people that are in the entertainment business, especially with comedies, you can't fucking take them seriously for all of them. Like, I'm sure that like 90% of that is just all trolling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's just fucking around and having a good time on Shannon Sharp show, drinking whiskey and spouting yeah. off about weird shit. Kind of upset that he had a very meteoric rise and then it just dropped off out of nowhere. Yeah. Most of the time when people are doing like that, you know, rabble rousing, uh, you used that word earlier, I like it. Uh, like someone like like a Norm Macdonald, let's say, is they don't like call out a bunch of famous people while they're doing it, and that's what Cat Williams did. He's like, you know, Kevin Hart, other people, you Ludacris. know, Ludacris, like, Ludacris, you know, all these guys, the kings of comedy, not Bernie Mac, but the other two, yeah. uh, Harvey and D.L. Hughley, just like fucking shitting all over them. So that was a little unique if he was just like new boot goofing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's there's like an element. I mean, I think all good comedy has an element of truth and definitely an element of exaggeration or playing on that truth to make it funny you know it's all about again it goes back to promoting yourself like that's i i talked about that the last time we're here that's why Chappelle mentions trans people and right four of his specials he knows people are going to talk about him i mean right to the top i got to give him credit like not everybody did it but cat williams got people in this instagram gratification society to watch a three-hour podcast you know yeah. like yeah. That's a pretty impressive. Too. Like, a lot of people watched the whole entire thing. That was, like, a big, uh, con- like, people watched that through watching it, too. That's, like, another weird thing that's been going on is, like, React content. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Like, people would watch that with their famous favorite streamer or their favorite YouTuber or whatever, and th- they would watch it and, like, talk about it and all this shit, and you'd watch them watching the fucking podcast so like not only is it a bunch like the original hits off the videos it's like a conglomerate of hits from thousands of people watching it through other streams that are watching it you know it's weird one of my favorite reaction videos i love uh vocal teachers hearing bruce dickerson from iron maiden for the first time <laughs> it's it's fun because it, it's like oh my god he, this is live this is a live performance he's doing this <laughs> <laughs> it's good dude i like watching like uh, rap producers and rappers and shit listen to like Rage Against the Machine and yeah. metal for the first time. That's one of the things that pops up often on my feed. Yeah, I've watched them listen. To, there was one. It was it was a, a rap hip hop person, and they listened to uh, Johnny Cash's Hurt. You know, and they're like, "Oh, this poor old white man. Like, <laughs> this has got some soul. I can fuck with this. Like, <laughs> it's good stuff." Someday we'll get into React content. We've talked about it in the past about doing like React content podcasts. We almost did one about the Andrew Tate, uh, mm. what's his name, interview. The yeah. fucking Pierce guy from Fo- no, the one with the dude Tucker from, Carlson, Tucker Carlson oh, okay. from yeah, Fox yeah. News. Yeah, we thought about doing that one, um, but we never got around to it. Uh, we ha- we have guests every week scheduled, so it's just a lot more shit to do. I think that what we should do. I just came up with this idea. It's going to be a little meta. It's going to be a little weird, but hopefully it takes off. We should react content to our own podcasts. Yeah. Just in a funny way. Be like, oh, what the fuck was he just talking yeah. about? Why I'm am like, I so <laughs> fucking stupid all the time? Yeah. God. Such and our monologue. Idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you make a comment about something like a, some kind of reference, and then it's like, actually, he was wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Someday we'll get there. Once, once we got more time to make more podcasts and stuff, we'll get to that point. Oh, yeah. Once you make enough money so you can quit your job. Exactly. Yeah. That's the goal, right? Yeah. Quit my job and do weird shit down here all day. Like I, I've been a big fan of last podcasts on the left for like the last yeah, I like them years too. and just listening to their growth and just like now they have their own crew and they mm-hmm. have their own comic book line and it's like, wow. Yeah. I like them and I like the dollop and there's a couple other comedy ones that I can't think of right I just, now. Uh, did you listen to their uh, Lost in the Andes podcast? No. Oh my god. They haven't been on the play- on the like uh playlist for a little while. Yeah, no, they just did uh the the Uruguay rugby team that crashed in the Andes for like 72 days and had it brutal. And it's just because mother nature sucks. It's not just oh they had to eat people. It was like they had to eat people. Avalanche, eat people. Avalanche. Yeah. Oh my god, they ran out of bodies. Oh, the snow melted away. They have seven more. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Just a continuous raft of yeah. shit. Well, it's like the pilot had told them that they were like 17 miles south of where they actually were. So, like, they're doing the expedition to get out of there. And, like, yeah. so they're a very religious 
Christian team and stuff. And like one guy gets to the peak expecting to see Chile and green and he just saw mountain range and he just cursed oh, God no. for the first time in his life. And then somebody's like, Hey, can you see anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's, t it's a tough break. Uh, those kinds of story. I like last podcast on the left too, because they, they have like, I think their story selection and the shit that they cover is always fucking mm -hmm. really interesting, really good shit. One I've been listening to a lot is Behind the Bastards. Oh, yeah. yeah. Behind yeah. the Bastards is real yeah. good, too. I like them. I haven't listened to them for a while, but, yeah, like, their, uh, uh, their Phil, Dr. Phil episode. The, uh, they did, the like, Ric Flair and Doc Hulk Oz. Vince McMahon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Vince yeah. McMahon was, like, five episodes they're real best. They were actually <laughs> of wrestlers. They were filming a documentary. I guess Netflix was filming a Vince McMahon documentary, and then those allegations came out and everything. Mm -hmm. And they just said, "Sorry, you signed off on everything. We're still gonna film all of this, and yeah. they're releasing, especially it. Yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Oh You're yeah. Fucked. Like it started out as like this praise thing, and then it just turned into this like I guess it's gonna be like this hit slam piece. piece. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's a bad break right there. Good for Netflix. Well, bad that's for him for uh, wearing that freaking mustache. Yeah. Have you seen that? I've seen the mustache. Looking like a Disney villain with a spray <laughs> tan. Weird dude. And, like, he's definitely not, like, an innocent guy. There's a ton of fucked oh, up yeah. shit that he's been doing for a long time. So it only makes sense that karma comes I back. Like, and... I was listening to this thing on, like, the doping scandals and stuff. Oh, yeah, like way that. before yeah, yeah. They, uh, they started regulating for steroids or testing for steroids and shit like that. Yeah, it's a fucked up. It was a fucked up time. But Dan, I think that yep. our time has concluded today. Speaking of time, it's super fun podcast yeah, as always. Well. Everything at once, a hundred percent, all yeah, over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time. Make sure you follow Dan. Follow Flagship Comedy Fest on Facebook and Instagram. All that shit. Absolutely. Show. Dan Brady on uh, TikTok. Yeah. Uh, Keystone Funny on TikTok, and then DB Comedy Eight One Four on Facebook and Instagram. Hell yeah. Cool. Check them out. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks for all the follows, likes, subscribes. Uh, if you haven't yet, go check out the Caranormal Indiegogo. Buy some premiere tickets. Support us. Become a sponsor. Get t-shirts, merch, all that stuff. Well, you don't need to do this. You blew up after you won. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 we already yeah, Thank you. Good yeah, job, yeah, everybody. Yeah, Thanks this for... This awesome. You're the best. We appreciate all the support. You're number one. We're glad we reached that goal. We appreciate you guys. Peace out. Peace.